Uh, Germany's center-left Social Democrats, SDP, has narrowly won the country's federal elections, beating the party of the outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel. According to preliminary results, the SDP secured 25.7% of the votes, while the ruling conservative CDU-CSU bloc gained 24.1%. For more on this, our rise correspondent John Cookson joins us now from Berlin. Uh, John Cookson, it's a pleasure to see you once again. Uh, keep up up to speed on what is happening in Germany. I mean, the parties know their fate already. They had a post-election debate yesterday to talk about the future of Germany. That was on DWTV. I mean, tell us a little bit about what's happening on ground now. The Jamaican hey, good coalition. It's great to be on the uh, morning show. Good morning uh, from uh, Berlin on the morning after the night before with this country uh, facing a three-way coalition for the first time ever. Uh, how how stable will that government be? Can it work? Nobody knows, because Germany now entering uncharted waters indeed after that historic uh, vote yesterday in this country, uh, 60 million people eligible to vote. And as you say, uh, the SPD, Social Democrats, winning a narrow marginal win there uh, in, in voting. Uh, those votes still being counted today. Uh, and an official result uh, uh, sometime uh, very, very soon. But uh, a, a shift uh, very much uh, by Germany uh, and the German people, uh, and it looks very much like we're heading towards a, a, a centre-left uh, coalition with the Greens uh, taking part in the government for the first time in 2005. And there will be a mystery partner. Who will that be? Uh, could it be the left uh, or could it be uh, the more liberal uh, a forward-thinking FDP party, uh, the party of, of business. So big decisions here in Germany in the coming weeks. And it is going to take weeks and, uh, and months to sort this out because uh, uh, of the way that German politics are, the complicated way that it works. Uh, and uh, this coalition uh, has to be formed. And uh, there'll be a lot of horse trading in the next few weeks with the Greens asking for this and uh, the SPD saying, Come, oh, no, we can't do that because it's too expensive. And then you have the, the, the Liberals coming in and they say, we want this. So there's going to be a lot of uh, back and forth uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, uh, uncertain times for Germany. And because Germany plays such a pivotal role in Europe, uh, uncertain times, I, I, I think, for, for, for Europe. Uh, some of the other uh, headlines that the uh, far right uh, uh, the AFD uh, did a little bit better than expected, getting 10.3% uh, of, of the vote. Uh, the Link Party, the left-wingers, only 49 And technically, that means that they can't enter Parliament, because, but they will uh, because of a, a loophole. And the other, other minor headline, if you like, is that the Bundestag gets its first transgender MPs in the form of Tessa Gansia and Nike Slavic. So... Uh, big changes uh, coming uh, in small C uh, conservative Germany in, in the coming weeks, guys. Well, I mean, you talked yeah. about the uh, coalition that uh, we all expect uh, in terms of weeks. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that it could take months uh, because of the oh, negotiations yeah. involved? And then, uh, uh, obviously, uh, sorry, uh, I was going to talk about the fact that there is no incumbent bonus in this election. Angela Merkel, one of the uh, most popular world leaders, was in charge of Germany for 16 years. And you will expect that perhaps her party uh, will do much better than the 24.1% that the party has been able to do. Uh, is this uh, a comment on uh, Angela Merkel's uh, stewardship or the candidate of the party is the problem? That's a, that's a good question. And three, three questions there. Let, let me answer the first one. How long will it take? Well, the German ambassador... Uh, to, to London said that it would take months, which might push it even beyond, beyond Christmas uh, uh, for, to find a, a new chancellor for this country. And it really was, uh, let's talk now about the CDU, Angela Merkel's uh, Christian Democrat Party, it really was a disastrous uh, day for them yesterday in, in polling, uh, down 8% uh, on uh, last time four years ago. So. Uh, not uh, a, a very good outcome for that uh, particular party. And you mentioned the, the, the leader or the man that uh, would be the proposed chancellor, Mr. Uh, Laschet. Uh, again, a disastrous time for him. And look, this man is political toast now, frankly. He's, he, he, he's, he's finished. Uh, there was a problem with him 
uh, a month or so ago, and it came at a memorial service uh, for people who died in floods, in, in disastrous floods in Germany, in which more than 200 people left dead and still many more missing. And he, guys, he was caught on camera sniggering at a, a joke. It wasn't anything to do uh, with, with, the, with the missing or, or, or the families. Uh, but it, it was a picture that was used frequently on, on, on social media and, and, and in mainstream media here. And it didn't go down very well uh, with the German people. And he had to uh, uh, apologize for that. And that was started a bit of a slide, frankly, uh, for Mr. Laschet uh, in, in the last few weeks. And uh, again, uh, it, it's reflected in the polls. As I say, the CDU down uh, 8% 8, 8 on last time. Uh, they got 24% of, of the vote overall, only a, only 1% a behind the, the winner. But, uh, you know, it really was, I think, this is a personal opinion, uh, down to public dis dissatisfaction uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the man that they wanted to be chancellor. Absolutely. Guys? Well, we'll never know what might have happened if Anna Gret Crump did not step down. But we've now seen what Amin Lachette did wrong. What did Olaf Scholz do right? Well, that's a good question. And let me start by answering that since I've been here, everyone I've spoken to, and they tend to, tend to be people in their 20s, 30s and 40s, they talked about change. Angela Merkel's been in, in power for almost 16 years now. It's far too long for any, any world leader to be in power. And people were desperate for change. Uh, there's a lot of problems with this country at the moment. Uh, COVID hasn't been handled particularly well, and that, that's an issue that the incumbent chancellor is going to have to sort out. And there are infrastructure problems in, in, in Germany, this great powerhouse of Europe. They, they need new roads, new bridges, new spending on, on, on public facilities. Uh, and uh, this is also something for the uh, new chancellor to have to uh, tackle uh, as part of Merkel's legacy. Merkel um, will stay as uh, caretaker chancellor until at least the, the end of the year, until they find another uh, chancellor. But uh, her, her record, her departing record, and hist history, I think, will not uh, uh, treat her very well. I, uh, one, one of you said a short time ago that she was one of the most respected world leaders. I'm, I'm not sure that's, that's absolutely right. Um, she um, has been in power, as I say, for almost 16 years and has, has had a mixed term of office, I think, uh, here in Germany. And the younger people I spoke to are glad to see her gone, uh, quite frankly. They're looking for change. And that was one of the reasons why the SPD has done particularly well. The other reason is that uh, uh, they have quite good, uh, the SPD have quite good green credentials. And it's very likely that uh, the Greens will join them in in a coalition and green issues are a major topic in this country at the moment. People are, 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 are looking for Germany to tackle some of the awful effects that global warming is bringing, not only to the world, but to, but to Germany in particular. And the floods bringing that message home in a most tragic way uh, just a few months ago here in this country. Guys? All right. Uh, so two things, an international dimension. Uh, most of the Syrian refugees, the family became Germany's, German citizens that came in in 2015. They got their first chance at voting in this election, over one million of them. I mean, you want to talk through about them? Is that a big uh, indication of that Angela Merkel's legacy because she let them in the first place or that affected her party? And could it also be the case for Amy Lachet because he's from the... You know, the, the borders close to Belgium, you know, the French speaking part, you know, did that play against Hamid Lachet in any way? Well, to, to answer the first part of your question, yes, of course, immigration was a, a massive issue when, the, when those refugees, asylum seekers, uh, <coughs> excuse me, migrants entered the country and indeed uh, Germany hosting more than a million uh, uh, of those people. And it, it's, it's a mixed picture, uh, as usual. Uh, when this happens, some have integrated, some have not, some have been able to vote, so most of them have not. Uh, so uh, the, the immigrant vote wasn't a, a, an important and significant uh, element to this particular election. As an issue, it was still of importance, but not as much as it was uh, some years ago, uh, back, back, in, back in 2017, for example, when the last uh, parliamentary elections uh, uh, took place. So uh, as far as immigration is concerned, yes, it is 
an important uh, uh, thing that people talk about here in Germany, but it's not as significant uh, and uh, as much a talking point as it was a couple of years ago, because there has been, to some extent, uh, some integration, but there's, there's still a not al also a lot of them uh, living on the streets. I've, I've noticed them here in, in Berlin, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and in other major cities, I'm sure it's, it's the same picture. There is a, a lot of problems to sort out. Uh, was this uh, an element of, uh, of this election? Probably not. Uh, not now that Merkel uh, has stepped down because the immigration issue was very much part of her, her legacy. As for Mr. Laschet, well, uh, look, uh, he uh, frankly is a boring speaker. Uh, the uh, New York Times, uh, I see, wrote uh, some days ago that uh, he, the, the reporter said he'd rather watch a kettle boil than listen, listen to Mr. Laschet make, make another speech. I mean, he, he's not a, a, a likable character in, 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 in the terms that you need to be uh, in these days of the, of the internet and, and, and social media. So uh, I think he's going to be something of a footnote in, in German history. Uh, pretty quickly, guys. Well, thank you very much, Joe Cookson. I would have uh, loved, to, uh, loved you to talk about the Greens, the sudden surge, uh, you know, about 15%. Would that be as a result of climate change? And then this is the tightest race uh, for a very long time in German elections, uh, ending the domination uh, by the two big parties, uh, the SPD and the CDU. Uh, that probably is a reflection of something else uh, in terms of the changing dynamics. But we would like to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.